you're going to like it. Don't miss this one. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Joining me today is Joshin, who is the COO and co-founder of Magic Eden. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Paul. It's great to be here. So let's get into a few points here. I want to first kind of set this up. Most of our audience will know about NFT marketplaces. They've kind of grown up, we'll call that, in their crypto journey on OpenSea, which is the obvious uh, one out there. But obviously Magic Eden um, fully into the Solana ecosystem. And I want to dive into a little bit about that in itself. And that is talking about just what's happening in Solana from an NFT standpoint. I was looking at just an example of Mad Labs right here. This was the analytics right now. We're on the weekly, but you can kind of see this is moving really even faster than Solana the token uh, in terms of NFT collections out there. So uh, that in itself is, is pretty impressive. I think the key here is one, uh, you know, for, for you guys, give me an insight to where you think the NFT market is going. Obviously, this is a big advantage for, for Magic Eden. For those who may have been uh, around for the first NFT wave, you know, a couple of years ago and seen that massive rise, uh, it is, I like how you've named the segment NFT Second Re Renaissance because it is a little bit like that in the sense yeah. of we are seeing an explosion of activity across uh, all the services on Magic Eden because we support all the major chains um, with Ethereum being a major one we're about to launch. But a lot of the activity in the last few weeks has been around Solana and also Bitcoin ordinals. On right. Solana, what's really driving that, right? Like from our perspective, we're seeing an explosion of activity because number one, there's, continu there's been continuous development of new standards, new NFT projects, even through the this period where things were relatively quiet. And we're now seeing the, the fruits of that really starting to bear uh, at the moment. And then number two is, I think this whole narrative about Solana being an extremely performant chain, um, where the tech is amazing, it's a very, very fast L1, that we've always believed it from the very beginning because we started our company on Solana. And it feels like now the market's really starting to catch up to that. And you're starting to see a lot more usage, not only in NFTs, but in DeFi, um, new standards being released on Solana. And that's obviously bled into more and more activity in the NFT market here too. So we've been really excited. And um, uh, we've seen a lot of interest from new creators who want to do something uh, with our Solana marketplace. So we've been very, yeah. very encouraged. Not a, hard, a little hard to say if it's exactly the beginning of a new bull or something like that, but we are very, very optimistic. And the last few weeks have been... been um, been really really cool to see within that you know because i have to look at it from a standpoint of who wins you know in terms of revenue how do you guys make money explain the the business model for magic eden yeah yeah the business model is pretty simple so we we're like a um a picks and shovels kind of business in that um we our fundamental thesis and belief even from the very beginning of when we started this company and it holds even more true today is we really believe that many, many things can uh, can become NFTs or can right. live in that within that technology. Uh, you guys might have seen, or some of the audience might have seen, we actually did a few uh, drops uh, in the last couple of months where um, people were minting uh, Pokemon cards, uh, and mm -hmm. they were in the form of NFTs. So this is sort of bridging that like true collectibles use case interest that has been very, very uh, strong outside of Web3 in the past and moving that on chain. And we just think that that's one of the examples of many, many things that could potentially come into the space too. We are in the business of making sure that as many things are created as possible. And when those things get created, there obviously needs to be a place where those things get uh, needs to get uh, traded, exchanged, or even collectors want to buy it and hold it. So our business is in, um, we take a cut uh, of every transaction that happens on Magic Eden. And um, for that, you know, what, what do we build? We build the best discovery experience. We build the safest, um, easiest place to trade. We build um, really, really amazing experiences around the NFTs because at, at the end of the day, NFTs is some kind of interesting content that people are looking for. Um, so that's the business. It's, it's fairly straightforward and we're excited to see just the explosion of new, new NFTs being created and uh, hopefully we're the place where, where more of that activity is going to happen. 
Yeah, I think the, the key here is going to be looking at the aggregators and then also the marketplaces, because obviously we've seen some rises of some pretty amazing marketplaces. But if you think about what Hyperspace is doing, you know, just their website, I'll kind of go over there. But you can you can go into Solana, Avalanche, you know, the Sui marketplace, et cetera. First of all, who who I guess who wins this in the era of, you know, interoperability do aggregators potentially become one of the major, you know, key features of NFTs as a whole? Or do you feel like the marketplaces are going to still kind of own not only the IP, I shouldn't say own it, but the, the sense of the location where the IP is being uh, essentially created and, and marketed? Who wins that? It's true. Like all of this stuff is, it's all open. So what we fundamentally believe in, if you look at our product, you'll see that Solana is obviously where we started, but we actually have a very sizable uh, ordinals business, a Polygon marketplace, um, and and about to be Ethereum. So the thing we've always believed is that interesting content can come in many, many forms. And it doesn't necessarily need to live on a certain chain or another chain, but depending on what you're trying to do with the NFT, it might make more sense to do it on, say, Solana, or it might make more sense to do it on, on Bitcoin, right? And as a result, we think that whoever has not only the best uh, ways to discover all of these different types of uh, NFT content, but also the best way to actually transact, the best way to, to experience it, that's ultimately got, that's what's going to win out. Um, pure aggregation is easy, actually, because you can... You know, everything's on chain. You can just aggregate it very, very simply. But that, is, that alone does not bring users to want to use the product. Um, so we've always thought about this at a fundamentally deeper level, which is uh, where is the interesting content? And for us, that will live on many, many chains. Um, yeah. We are not yet on some places like Avalanche, but mm -hmm. down the line, we hope to be. Um, but today, it's kind of like high value items are being traded on Bitcoin, which and people are, they want that because Bitcoin is sort of seen as the ultimate store of value, safest, most decentralized, sort of, you know, the, the OG of all chains. But you may not find gaming items there, right? right. And your audience will, will definitely know this. Like you'll find gaming items probably on Solana or Polygon because that's where it's cheaper. It's uh, much more easily accessible. It's um, much faster to, to transact. And that's the kind of thing you're looking for if you're potentially trading a, a gaming item. You know, Matt, we, we also um, are both a marketplace and an aggregator now. Mm -hmm. um, so we, that line is now blurring, I think, to your original question about like, where is it going to shake out? I think it's already yeah, blurring for sure. Um, yeah. So we, um, we spent a lot of time just trying to build this experience that, yeah, really emphasizes really great discovery, really great cr cross-chain experiences and really amazing content on all these different chains. Um, I obviously have a lot of theses and, and really fundamental beliefs about where this industry is going to go because we yeah. wouldn't have started this company otherwise and we wouldn't be doing things like these Pokemon cards um, otherwise. Um, and um, so it's very, very difficult to say, but here's some things that I'm personally really excited about. I'm really excited about um, even with the traditional, well, traditional in, a, <laughs> in, in this sense, uh, 10K PFPs, mm -hmm. that's, that's not going away because... Right. What is it ultimately? It's ultimately um, communities that are coming together and creating this very supercharged version of what a normal, even online or offline community is. It's just supercharged with NFTs. Mm -hmm. And then there are things where creators are experimenting, such as what you're, you are saying about um, the tying things to physical items. And we've seen... A lot of creators do this. Azuki created a, a new thing called PBT, and yep. they've linked a bunch of their NFTs to uh, physical sort of uh, clothing items. Um, and then we are experimenting with these real life collectibles, um, Pokemon cards. Mm -hmm. We did a, a thing with a with a Rolex watch recently right. that allowed users to uh, potentially like win a Rolex watch, and then. Um, so all of these things, we are, yeah, I think they're very much in experimentation mode. Um, the key for us has always been to let's enable that experimentation. Let's make sure creators yeah. are coming and trying these things. And if for whatever reason they 
pick up, people get excited about it. Um, that's, that's what we're here for. So we, we want to enable all of that. Yeah. You mentioned Ethereum, you know, just quickly, what's the timeline for Ethereum being able to launch within Magic Eden? Yeah. Um, so we have been working on a new Ethereum marketplace with Yuga Labs, which we announced um, a couple of weeks ago, oh, sorry, a couple of months ago at, um, mm -hmm. at Apefest, yep. which was Yuga's sort of headline event. And we're excited about this because the whole thesis behind it is that um, there should be a creator focused marketplace. And, you know, over the course of the last two years, NFT sort of became this, um, yeah, I mean, it became kind of like a traders, uh, pure trading kind of paradise, uh, sure. similar to kind of fungible tokens. But the reality is the NFT market is so much bigger than that. And it has the potential to be so much bigger than that. And we share that aspiration with uh, Yuga, who are obviously one of the, probably the biggest creator um, right. uh, of all the NFT creators today. So we decided to pair up and build a creator focused marketplace. It's coming in uh, Q1, early Q1 of next year. 2024. Okay. So we're in the in the thick of it at the moment. And um, we're pumped. We think it's going to be a really great place for that's not only supportive of creators to come in, um, create NFTs and, and feel supported uh, and help them drive towards a business model that's sustainable. Mm -hmm. But also, um, wherever creators are, and there's content, um, yep. that's where the best discovery is going to happen too. So we're pumped to be working with them on this and excited for the launch next year. I want to show a clip for you just to kind of connect for our audience because there might be some new people watching today not really understanding the uh, connectivity between a digital, you know, physical asset and a digital good or possibly a collectible. Listen in. Purchase 47 digital cards and we'll mail you a beautiful trading card. For the first time, we're creating a real physical trump card. It is an authentic piece of the suit I wore when I took that now famous mugshot. And it was a great suit. Believe me, a really good suit. It's all cut up and you're going to get a piece of it. I'll be autographing some of them. I wish I looked as good as I do on those cards. That I can tell you. They give me muscles where, believe me, I don't have them. <laughs> Trump, he's something else. But the, the interesting, I think it's brilliant. You can think about it. he's taking his suit that he... He got his mugshot in, putting this into a physical card, and then using this as a digital asset. And you know, uh, it's 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 pretty crazy. I was looking at Magic Eden right here. Here's the here's the score here's the scorecard of his digital cards. He's number one right now, in terms of uh, top trade. You know, this is crazy. And and also holds the number two position. So that in itself, yeah. and if you go over if you go over and look at Dune Analytics, this is what's amazing. Look at this, Trump NFTs right now, 34 million, total profit around almost 12 million. And remember, he's still getting, you know, uh, the ability to get royalties off of this. So just, you know, fantastic. I think for a lot of brands, they're going to start to realize and maybe the light bulbs are going to start coming on and realizing this is a new tool for creating communities. Are you having a lot of brands reach out to you guys and just ask about how to get started in, in possibly uh, developing NFT strategies? Yeah, definitely. Before we get into that, man, I just want to say you got, you got to give it to him. You know, the guy, the guy's in everything. He does. He's a he manages to find a way in everything. <laughs> uh, no, it's impressive. Um, yeah, in terms of brands, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something that we we've worked with a lot of all kinds of different companies, brands looking to usually one of two goals. One is to engage their existing audience in some new and unique ways. Um, or two, it's to supercharge the growth of their communities. Because I think mm -hmm. brands and companies now have been realizing that um, what is, how do you do that and how do you capture sort of the attention and engagement of your fan base? And even if that fan base might be, you know, really distributed, really far away, how do you create that sense of belonging and community? One of the things we've made it really easy for creators to kind of work with us and experiment is we have this um, uh, product called launch, NFT Launchpad, and it allows creators to effectively launch an NFT project and um, and you know uh, use that as a way to test out some of the things they're thinking about with with the audience that's already native on Magic Eden, and that audience yeah. is, is obviously you know 
we, we are, we are minting things every day and, um, this audience comes in that checks out new content every day. So, um, we've, we've been running that product for a couple of years now. It's proved to be a really successful product. You're bound to draw in a lot of people that are maybe not native to this. And I was looking at your, your project that was uh, centered around, uh, VIP. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about Magic Eaton VIP? Cause I couldn't really understand. Is this more of a white glove service for those who want to maybe like a, you know, a crypto whale that says, Hey, I, I want to, I don't want to mess with trying to figure out which ones to buy. What's the process here? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I think, so we, we serve a lot of different types of users on Magic Eden. You know, the core, the core user is sort of someone, you know, your typical kind of retail user, right. That has some familiarity with crypto and NFTs. They know how to uh, navigate their way around buying and selling themselves. And given the, the size or, um, uh, wallet size that they have, that they're happy to just do that on their own, um, using all of the discovery tools that we have. We established VIP uh, for a very, very different type of user, which is, uh, as you said, someone that is potentially like a much, much higher value um, kind of user in, in the sense of they, they're buying uh, in much more significant quantities, mm-hmm. or it's um, potentially like a um, semi-institutional kind of um, uh, buyer okay. where they may be, you know, they may want some more custom uh, white gloves, sort of onboarding help advice. Um, and that's the service that we are happy to provide to them. So, uh, all, you can imagine all kinds of, um, questions and things come up when working with these types of users. And, but our goal is to help make sure that they have the best experience when they're using magic Eden. And, you know, if you're trying to buy something at pretty significant size or, um, trying to buy something or a set of things that may not be directly available on the Magic Eden mm-hmm. marketplace, but potentially other users might have, um, that's something we, we can also help with. So it's sort of a full okay. full service white glove product. Back to the ETH scenario, again, once you launch Ethereum, at that point, especially when you look at interoperability, I mean, what is the, what would be, is that an open sea killer at that point? What is your thought? Hey, Paul, you said it, not me. <laughs> I, uh, you, you can give uh, me an we, answer. We obviously, <laughs> <laughs> we, um, look, we're, we're feeling really, really good about it in the, in the sense of we're not, we're not here to necessarily, yeah, be a killer of this, a killer of that. I think the market is too small to be kind of talking about it in those terms. I think ultimately this, this market needs to get a, a, quite a lot bigger, uh, at least for us to realize our vision, which mm-hmm. is NFT should have a place in 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 many many parts of your life not just when you're buying trying to buy some jpegs right this is just one of those you know beginning beginning of the s curve you know technological adoption kind of thing um yeah so but the reason that we are excited about the ETH marketplace is because um it's no one's done this before uh, yeah, no one has sure. actually created this kind of product that we are going to create and no one has really stood up for creators and the content that they are putting out there, which ultimately we feel is the the bedrock, the backbone of what made NFTs really cool, right? If you think about how do you define that first period of, of NFT adoption, people think about CryptoPunks, people yep. think about Bored Apes, people might think about, yeah, like some of these really OG kind of um, creations. And that cannot happen without the likes of yeah, the likes of those that created um, those things. So we feel like this is sort of the right side of history to be on. Um, Not to say that um, traders, users, collectors are not important. They're absolutely really important. It's a two-sided ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But we feel like creators have been really let down in the last six to 12 months and we want to be in a position to really help them. And the reason we have conviction about this is because we've seen this movie on Solana. About a year ago, the same things happened from a yeah. royalties perspective. And we worked really hard with the community to build new royalty standards. And now the entire community is back on um, creator royalties, which is which is amazing. We're seeing the fruits of that now with, with the Solana NFT ecosystem really picking back up. So we have a lot of conviction around it. We're excited about it. Uh, uh, I, would, I wouldn't put it in those uh, sort of adversarial binary sort of terms, but uh, I think we can we can really make a really big dent in in terms of making NFTs huge. 
And I think it really is the proposition that makes this whole market different and and I think very unique in the, in the sense of, you know, new businesses, new brands coming in. They're starting to realize, you know, that the IP itself can extend into those secondary markets. And I think that's where a lot of people are just now discovering, you know, what the potential is there. Speaking of that, because I'm looking at onboarding, and I was looking at some of the features that you guys are are using right now. This is Mad Lads, and I'm I'm on one here that is a little bit more expensive in terms of Soul, 255 Soul, and I want to show something that is a feature you guys have. It's called Crossmint. Now this is disabled right now on that level, but if you back up further into other collections or another asset that's much lower. I can go in and use a credit card for, what, what's the reason for that? Why is there like a limit for, for cross-mint usage, meaning it'll be able to use a regular credit card? This is a core part of our cross-chain experience because um, ultimately if you are someone, say you're new to the space, maybe you want to pay with credit card, that's fine. Maybe you want to pay with, um, you, you hold most of your, your crypto in ETH, maybe you want to pay with ETH, or maybe you have Bitcoin, you want to pay in Bitcoin. And that's the kind of experience that we're trying to create. And um, depending on um, where the user is originating, like typically most people usually join one <laughs> NFT community or on one chain and they really get deep in that chain. And it's sort of hard for them to actually discover and get deep in some other things. So this, this sort of onboarding um, experience takes away some of those barriers, right? So you mm-hmm. don't have to you know, say go to an exchange, swap it, come back. And sure. then no. at that point, do you still, do you still want to do it? Right. Right. Um, yeah. So we're working on two things. One is like native kind of integrations like this, like with CrossMint, and uh, we've worked with MoonPay and a few other partners on these kinds of products. And then the other one is um, right now we actually have a, a magic Eden wallet out in beta. It's in beta testing at the moment with uh, about a thousand users. And okay. Um, the really cool part about that is that that's also going to have these native um, trade, like the ability to trade natively between Bitcoin, Ethereum, mm-hmm. Solana, Matic, all natively in that experience. So why not? Why not just uh, partner up with someone like Phantom? You know, of of being. I mean, because obviously Phantom is extensive in the Solana community, does a great job, um, has it already built out. We've talked to the Phantom team here often. Why not just go that direction as trying to rebuild another wallet? Yeah, well, we love the Phantom team. The Phantom team is uh, is amazing. We've been, been partnering on a bunch of different things. The the vision that we have around uh, not just the wallet, but this goes back to the point around like how do we create the best NFT experience? And we are not building a um, a general utility wallet, right? Mm-hmm. The experience that we want to create is what is the best experience for NFTs. And okay. how do you design a wallet from scratch that is just has NFTs. that exactly in mind? Yeah. yeah. So well, there's going to be a there's the going to be a lot of integration. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of integration there in terms of future for NFT, especially on utility side. So I can see your point. There's a lot of opportunity yes. there for you know kind of upside and discoverability is going to be inside the wallet itself. Exactly. All the okay. all the functionality that an NFT user might want, whether it's discovery, whether it's um, Maybe it's like they actually want to know what's happening in the community of that NFT that they that they own. Maybe they they're, want to be aware showing, of. Um, yeah, they're showing your app on, yeah. on screen. There is it going to be integrated to the app itself, or will this be a, a, a completely separate project? Uh, this this is a this is a separate project. This is a separate okay, project. Right. Yeah. So, um, the mobile experience and the wallet are both things that 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 we we really really believe in because ultimately. Yeah, you, you want to make it really easy for for anyone to use and discover NFTs, and um, the more seamless we can make that, that's all. That's all part of the vision that we have. Let's talk about Avalanche, and then also IMX. You know, uh, both of which, you know, could uh, could really be in, integrated here. I, I just see Magic Eden kind of as the the shining light for a lot of interoperability. What what are your thoughts about uh, <coughs> those platforms? Yeah, so we're we're very interested in, in adding additional chain support on Magic Eden. So today, as I said, we have four chains integrated. Right. We don't yet support Avalanche and IMX and some of the various L2s on EVM, um, but we are very excited about 
a lot of the innovation that's happening. So oh yeah, on Avalanche, there's a lot of really interesting gaming projects. IMX for sure. Now that they've partnered up with Polygon on the ZK VM tech, um, mm. it's really, really cool to see the number of games that have been committing to build within that ecosystem. Um, it's same on some of the L2s. It's been really cool to see things like friend tech and some of the social apps take flight right. on the, the L2s, right? Like base and, and optimism and some of those. So uh, right now we have quite a lot on the plate in the sense that yeah. we just got to just focus on the things that we, we have going on, but um, absolutely really excited to integrate more and more of these chains yeah, and, I'm, well, yeah, and uh, guys... help bring, yeah. Yeah, you've got flow out there with Disney and their efforts. Uh, so yeah, I could see you got a lot uh, got a lot lined up for you. I'm looking at your creator page. I'm going to keep throwing some ideas at you if if anything. Uh, here's Clanosaurs right here, and if you look at the experience, I mean, I like the experience in general on Magic Eden. One thing I am would be intrigued with is just more whether it was like a news feed, a social feed, more integration within the creator pages. Any plan for that? Yeah, absolutely. I think both on the creator pages and the uh, collection pages, there's actually quite a lot of richness that 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 we could bring to it. And uh, we've yeah. always had thoughts that um, when users are discovering um, these various collections, you need more than just the financial information, right? Like more than just mm -hmm. the floor price, more than just the stats. You actually also want like what other people in this community even talking about. Why are they even here? Uh, are they, is it a community that really likes a particular game? Like, you know, Mad Lads, obviously it's created by the founders of uh, Backpack Wallet, right? So it's uh, very much oriented around um, products that our team is building. So there's a lot more types of rich information that can um, give the user, you know, whether it's signals, whether it's uh, context, um, beyond just some of the stats that we have today. It's an area that we've been exploring quite a bit. So, so stay tuned. I think um, uh, we are pretty interested in that. Good. Well, that, that'll that be uh, nice to see. A couple other big names out there. DraftKings would be a, another great integration for you. Uh, I'm looking at this and just in terms of the number of sales that are generated over here on DraftKings right now. Obviously a Polygon uh, project. So Joshin, uh, the last question I have for you is Google lost their antitrust trial for and with uh, Fortnite with Epic Games. A couple of things the court kind of found, and we talked about this uh, earlier, is um, th this was a solid win for, for Epic. What does this do for companies like yourself that could really start to go into mobile app ecosystems such as Apple and obviously the Google Play Store? and the future of NFT interaction within that, especially from a game side, what does this mean for Magic Eden? Yeah, I mean, we're, we are really hopeful that um, that more and more of these sort of large ecosystems, Google, Apple, um, yeah, can be more supportive of, of, of NFTs. Um, I think that it's challenging today, given some of the, given some of the rules. Um, obviously, we, we, we will operate and abide by whatever rules are put out there. Um, but the more that uh, I think NFTs and the activity around it can be supported in mobile ecosystems, I think the more beneficial that will will be. Um, because we ultimately, as a as a app developer ourselves and a marketplace that wants to, yeah, we we want to be fairly agnostic when it comes to these things. Um, we also don't want to operate in sort of a fragmented world, right? Like right. if there are are the app stores that get built that just want to support crypto, which we've, we've already seen and heard mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Um, sure. Ultimately, yeah, we, we prefer to just be in wherever is the, the main place that people uh, are already using. So yeah, that I, I, I don't really have too many detailed, uh, deep comments about that particular case, but in general, we're really supportive of obviously, you know, anything that helps promote additional, uh, um, yeah, abilities for NFTs to get propagated, yeah. and um, hopefully that is more of what we see going forward from from uh, Google and Apple. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think you know we're going to continue to see a lot of advancements in just the use case for technology around NFTs, outside of what we know today in terms of these marketplaces. Today, you know, they're very vibrant game assets. 
PFPs, you know, great design in terms of the collections. As we start to see utility work its way into the marketplace, which I think this would be the cycle that we do see it, this will get intriguing uh, for sure because you're going to see a whole new layer of business models that will be launched within this from traditional, you know, Web2 businesses. So that has to be exciting for anybody that's listening in uh, today on the episode for sure. Uh, Joshin, it's been great uh, having you on. Uh, thanks so much, COO and co-founder over at Magic Eden. We'll try to get an update from you guys, as uh, especially on when you launch the uh, the ETH platform, because I think that'll be interesting to see kind of what happens within Magic Eden there. But thanks for coming in today. We appreciate it. Appreciate it, Paul. Thanks so much for the time. You bet. All right, so guys, get over here and subscribe to the channel right now. We are entering, I think, a phase for digital assets that may be unprecedented. And if you just think about technology in those early adoption periods, I think feel like this is one of them. I've had a chance to live through those in my Silicon Valley days. I've had a chance to work with a lot of software developments over at Microsoft. I've seen these cycles start to show up before, and it has a lot of those markers right now. So you need to really pay attention to what's happening in the NFT, gaming space, etc. It all relates to what's going on in blockchain and Web3. So you want to learn more about that, subscribe to the channel right now. Get in on the Diamond Circle. It's another great way to get additional content. Also, follow me on X. It's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.